So, okay, the, the, do you have anything very urgent to say on the film or on the concept? So then we need to get into the role play. Ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, in case of juvenile restorative justice in uh, juvenile uh, cases, mm -hmm. uh, don't you think the victim also uh, is, uh, it depends upon the victim and the mindset of the victim also? Like, Precisely. Uh, the victim it should does. feel responsible that uh, his or her decision uh, actually involves, uh, basically he is taking a decision for another person, a juvenile in these cases, and his decision uh, can form or uh, sort of destroy a future itself. Mm -hmm. So a uh, certain amount of awareness should be there in, in the victim. Tim as if well you, and not you, just driven by yeah. if you focus on the process then, explained if you focus on the process explained there is the counselors first counselors meet both the sides hmm. and it's only when the counselors are satisfied that they are you know, it will be useful for the two parties to meet that they will propose a meeting and then the mediator comes into operation the counselor doesn't sit in the mediation so counselors are set, different set of people who will look at the suitability of okay. the first of all the offender. If the offender is not ready, the victim might want to you know, pardon, but the uh, offender is not asking for mm -hmm. uh, forgiveness. So both the sides have to be worked through. And when both the sides are ready, okay. it may vary. Certainly murder trials, you do not you know that. Suppose in case of uh, Nirbhaya's mother also. Certainly till that point, mm -hmm. as she is still grieving, they are still so angry, you know, but till that point, the parties are still struggling. And this woman, the victim who is in the documentary, she does say she was very angry in the beginning and of course she didn't want to. The counselor job to prepare them for this. And in the meeting then also, you know, what she said okay. that, well, you, my, my son felt that they were really apologetic. So it is their sense of that, are they, are, do they think that the victim is, uh, is, is repentant? Is the victim really wanting uh, business? Uh, is really meaning what he says? Or he's just wanting to get away from punishment? That is the sense that there will be nothing, nothing will follow from that. So whether the meeting will be successful or not will depend on what happens in the meeting. So there are different stages. First of all, preparing them for the meeting, then handling the meeting, then determining whether something can come out or not. The victim might still walk out that, no, no, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think that he is actually repentant. They might just feel that he's doing it for the sake of doing it because whatever, you know, he'll go some material purposes. So till okay. the time the victim and the offender is able to create that trust by what he says, unless the people are genuine and sincere in the meeting, it will it may not relate to results. Mm -hmm. And that's a possibility. Not every every meeting will be successful. In fact, in the documentary, the one I have, which I'm not planning to show, uh, she had one meeting and she still wasn't satisfied. She wanted to have a second meeting, which usually is not done. And she did go for a second meeting where mm -hmm. she wanted to know there was something which she didn't say in the first meeting. She wanted him to answer this, those other more, more questions also. So there might be individual cases and you will have to look at the individual parties uh, involved in the conversation to determine what uh, what is best in, in the circumstances. Okay, ma'am. So are we ready? Ma'am, can I make a very small point? I'll not take time. I'll, yes, not, I'll yes. take hardly 30 seconds. Okay. Ma'am, uh, that is, uh, restorative justice can be there for first-time offenders, but maybe not for habitual offenders, because I have a personal experience to share. Mm -hmm. I went to Tihar Jail a, for, and, under a DLSA internship program, and there was a person who was in the jail for kidnapping. And when I, as a law student, just asked him, okay, after you go out, I'm sure you're not going to continue with this offense. I said, no, no, you, you've been punished for this offense. How can you continue doing this offense? You'll go out as a reformed person. Mm. He said, Madam, I'm not understanding. This is my profession. Mm. That is my job. <laughs> so, so this is a person who's a habitual offender. Well, so restorative justice may not, not be done for this. Point, that picking up the parties on both the sides is essential. A very, very careful job. You just can't say every case will go to restorative justice. But the cases which can go, should go. Because it brings out much better consequences than the processing through only the criminal justice system. So nobody is saying every single case should be settled through constitutive justice. No. We're saying that in cases where it can be, 
So the tensions will be reduced, the outcomes will be much better, the, the, the recidivism will be decreased further. So all those are the benefits. If you put some people, at least those who are suitable, so selection of your parties and selection of cases is a very important exercise before you say that's what is justice. But what we are not doing is even thinking about doing it even in cases where it can be done. We are always challenged about cases where it cannot be done. We are always focusing on those aspects. But we want to focus on the cases where it can work. Mm -hmm. True, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. So can we, uh, can I have a roll call of the uh, parties? Do we have all these people? Mrs. Yes. Sherpa? Yes, ma'am. Solon does. Uh, Mr. Sherpa? Mr. Sherpa, are you no. here? No, ma'am. Mama ma Shok, sir, is supposed to be Mr. To Sherpa. Okay. okay, then Mrs. Okay. Sherpa will only be meeting. Uh, do we have Sherpa's, uh, Mrs. Sherpa's daughter, Ragini? Yes, ma'am. Honey. Yeah, so you two will work as a team. Uh, do we have yes, Hassan? Yes, ma'am. Hassan's father, Mr. Munir? Present, ma'am. Hassan's mother, Shehnaz Bano. Present, ma'am. Shabuddin. Present, ma'am. Shabuddin's father, Zafar Ali. Yes, ma'am. Shabuddin's mother, Mehmooda Begum. Present, ma'am. So, eight of you are Thank here. You. I am the facilitator for today's meeting. And I... Uh, call the meeting to a formal uh, order. You are all aware that we are here to find out the best manner in which this situation can be handled. We all know what has happened, but we will want to hear from the parties what happened. And I do hope that by the what we do know is that the offenders have uh, accepted that they have done the wrong, and they have also agreed to make amends. We do hope that a proper uh, conclusion will be drawn out from this meeting. So are we ready to start the conversation? Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, before we start this conversation, I have something. Actually, Ashok sir is not here, but he has sent a message for, uh, with his answers. Yeah, it doesn't so matter we which share, share that we, we will look at it later on. At this point of time, okay. let's have the meeting of the people who are present at the moment. <clears throat> okay. Right. At any point of time, the, the, the family members can say that this is what the father felt and said. So you can use this when the meeting is going on. Right? Is that all right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So can I invite... Mrs. Sherpa, to tell us what do you think when you realized that uh, what uh, have uh, Shabuddin and Hassan done? What did Ma'am, uh, initi Ma after uh, knowing the situation, after knowing what, why did they do this? Or at the time uh, when they did this? When they did this, at that point of time. When they did this, I was, I was really shocked and I, was, uh, I felt helpless. I was very. Oh, I was, my apologies. Uh, my apologies. My apologies. We need to start with the offender. I would like to start with okay. Hassan. Could you please tell us what happened and what was your part in that, Hassan? Yes, ma'am. So, uh, ma'am, I'm, I'm going to take this from the bottom. So, me and my friend uh, Shahbuddin, we are friends. Um, and we used to study together in school and uh, we both uh, we both have this passion of singing and uh, we used to sing in, in our school functions and uh, wherever we got any opportunity opportunities to sing so uh, we used to get a lot of appreciations and uh, we were we both were uh, not very good in academics so you know the school uh, didn't allow us to continue after a particular class because we were not performing well. Then uh, we 
uh, our our parents you know asked us to because our uh, we belong from a very low um low low class a very poor family so our our parents my parents you know they asked me to join an apprenticeship under a mechanic so that we we could also help our parents in um, you know the earning, earning and uh, uh basically do, uh, you know monetary yes, help our family can you focus on what had happened not yes, why so, it happened uh, but tell us what happened so ma'am basically there was this uh, audition of singing audition as as i just told you that we we both are we both are very fond of singing so there is this singing uh, audition that was going to happen and uh, the audition fee was 10000 rupees and uh, there were the so basically on on the day of this incident we had only one day to deposit the audition fee and uh, we saw mr sherpa withdrawing 10000 rupees and uh, it uh, it was at that moment where i realized that we uh, this that snatching away those 10000 rupees from mr sherpa was the only option left because mm -hmm. the deadline was so near to us and we had to deposit money because we thought that it was the only um, opportunity through which you could we could you know pursue our dreams okay. so i asked my friend uh, shahabuddin to uh, mm -hmm. you know um, uh, um we you know on the spot we i asked him to just uh, go and snatch away the money we will mm -hmm. return the money later and uh, he was at for at first a few moments he wasn't so much convinced he was a little apprehended but then uh, he went along with me when i became more promising and when and then we did what we did we went to mr sharp and we snatched away the money and then we were arrested okay so that's what happened <clears throat> and that time yes, your only thought was what ma'am uh, my only thought was the audition it was in my mind mm -hmm. and i could only think of getting me and my friend uh, registered in that audition so and since i the time, couldn't yeah okay so since the time yes, you I... have been arrested what have until now what are the, what are your thoughts now ma'am uh when i when uh, i got arrested it was then it it fell very heavily on me i i got some time to realize uh, of what i have done to mr sherpa and uh, i uh, i started to realize what wrong i have committed to my family and uh, what shame i have brought to my family and uh, it was all me that i you know because because i convinced shahabuddin to uh, do the act which we you know did okay who who all do you think have been affected by your action ma'am uh, first of all i think ma'am first of all i think that uh, uh, mr Sher, mr sherpa she has been affected because uh, we have done mon uh, we have monetarily caused harm to her and also caused alarm in her mind and uh, also i have I, i think that i have brought shame on my family mm -hmm. and also i have uh, i think i uh, th that's my thinking that i unnecessarily brought shahabuddin into the picture mm -hmm. and also brought some kind of shame on his family also okay. and um, Yes, ma'am. These are the main people that I'm concerned with. Okay, Shahabuddin, do you want to add something? What What is it that you were thinking at that time? What happened after that? What have been your thoughts since then? Who all are affected? Right. Uh, I'm firstly <laughs> very sorry for what I did with my friend. Uh, we had been working in the motor garage, and uh, uh, we've since. Uh, many since a uh, lot many days we were thinking about this uh, god talent show and uh, i had tried to convince my parents but they did not give me any money and uh, i tried convincing them again again for them they scolded me 
and so just there was uh, a spark in me just to get in this uh, get admitted to this uh, uh, show anyhow and i was confident like i will make it to the higher rounds if i just get it there anyhow so i tried with uh, my motor garage uh, owner also uh, to get some money but he denied and said to go do the job that i was doing and it was better for me and i was just infuriated that i was not able to get any money and i was cursing my family also and then one day uh, while we were out of the motor garage as uh, hasan told he pointed out that uh, uh, one lady uh, which i know now is mushafa she was taking out money from the atm and uh, i was apprehensive uh, but uh, I, it was just like uh, i just wanted uh, to be in there somehow in the event so i agreed with hasan and i also told hasan that uh, to maybe to convey uh, to assuage assuage my guilt that uh, we will throw the money back to her house once we make it to the higher rounds and then i agreed with him and it was just a snap of the moment i did not even realize that i was doing a criminal act i had never been an offender to my entire life only i had uh, just i was not good at academics so i got i was withdrawn from my uh, school but then i was sincerely working at the motor garage and i had never done any kind of crime in my life so now uh, i even while we were doing that uh, i was apprehensive inside and there was a element of fear but i was overcome by my want for being in that competition so it was just happened we snatched the bag plan that we will run into uh, uh, some lane and nobody will be able to catch us and but uh, we were caught police came to our house and uh, my parents could not believe that i had done and i just had my face down so i was i was i am very ashamed uh, for what i did and uh, i am willing to do anything that may elevate the pain of others and of the of mr sharpa and her family and then also help no. my family to go with it mr sharpa what did you think when you realized that <clears throat> people have uh, pushed you and taken your money what the, what i was utterly shocked mm -hmm. i was utterly shocked i was uh, in i was i could not realize for a moment what has happened and when i got you know, into my senses i realized that they've snatched my purse and i was angry i was in grief and i was helpless and weak and i could not help at that time that is what i felt i felt really angry i was i was in shock also at that time what is the impact of the incident on you and the other members in your family it has affected us mentally and it has affected us financially as well that money mattered a lot for us i being a retired school teacher my husband being a retired banker we do not really have any source of income right now and these are the only savings that we have mm. and we were in need of that money so it affected me both mentally physically also my health was affected mm. i kept on thinking about the incident again and again and that really always at, at any time when i used to think about it i was i would tears would come out of my eye and i would think that again financial loss and my my husband was also disturbed with this incident mm -hmm. and i have only one daughter and i am we are we are not dependent on anybody we we have got only one daughter she lives outside the a city she could not even be with us and we felt really vulnerable have you also broken a leg yes no i haven't okay um so what is your daughter's viewpoint what what did uh, ragni what did you think when you realized what had she... happened to your mother ragni has to speak yes um it was very shocking for me to to know this thing that some something like this has happened with my mother i felt very angry that time and obviously in grief also then how that that two small 
children could do some, do something serious like that mm-hmm. and uh, but that time i was more concerned about my parents security are they secure enough uh, at the at a place which is far away from me they mm-hmm. must have had some bad conditions uh, the criminals must have some bad condition in their life but that cannot justify what they have done with my mother mm-hmm. that's what i felt so what is the impact on you of this incident with your mother uh, after this i became something more conscious about security of my parents who are just living at a distance place from me it was a great shock for both of them mentally as well as physically they have lost some money and that too with the, with such a incident mm-hmm. so that was a shock for all of us but at the same time i became more conscious about how they well they uh, means live at the place which is far away from me what are the security concerns and so all what of that is, what has been the hardest thing for you since then ragini what has been the hardest thing for you since then since the incident the hardest thing was to rely and having faith on their apology and you come to a system which is uh, supposed to be a safe and supportive system how uh, do we ascertain that uh, the system which we are going from now what has been honey what has been what has been mother. what has been the hardest thing for you since the incident with your mother the first thing was of course the distance because uh, at the time of incident i was not with my parents and uh, it is only them who are suffering at the time of crime afterward then i joined that uh, uh, i joined them it was uh, the um, mediation thing that uh, how can we rely and having faith on the mediation itself and uh, do they really on the apology or they are just doing for the sake of uh, avoiding some punishment okay what do the parents of hasan think what has been their thought when they learned about the incident and what has been the hardest thing for them uh, we were in a denial mode in the very beginning we couldn't accept that our child could do something of this sort we were shocked and also at the same time we were embarrassed after understanding that maybe as he has done this we were in that is emotionally moved and is now feeling and we felt empathetic as well mm-hmm. as to why and how our child could do this right and what did your father asan's father felt <clears throat> at the first action i felt very angry about it when i came to know about it i was very angry and i was like that the, my kid has ruined my reputation in the society and now i will be faced with all the taunts and all i am a poor person i find it very hard to support my family but still i have earned a lot of respect in the society but so when i came to know about this incident it was a utter shock for me i could never imagine that uh, he would do such a thing but when i got to meet him uh, and when he told me why he did it or so i i felt very helpless uh, i felt like that i uh, because of me that i could not support his dreams that he had to do such a such a thing that he is uh, uh, damaging the uh, like uh, uh, posing threat to the health of the society at large so i i felt very helpless about it and uh, uh, so and uh, but uh, now he has a i am happy that now he has a realization that he has done something very bad and he will uh, uh, what i am getting out of it being his father is that he will never uh, think of doing such a thing again and i also i will also try to uh, give or do much more efforts towards this direction and try to support his dream so that he himself would not be forced to do such a thing what did the what did the shahabuddin's father Uh, reaction was what did you feel when you heard about the incident ma'am i am a very poor guy i'm a cop is the only thing i have been doing all my life 
but whatever i do i do with honesty uh, whatever i do i do with honesty never felt that my son will take such kind of direction in his life though he was not good in studies but i felt even after that he went and took the training in that garage i thought that at least he is doing something for his life and maybe he is also going to help me after a while in carpentry business and all carpentry but when i got to know this thing that he has done such a such a thing i was really shocked i couldn't believe this thing that he can do such such a thing i was really embarrassed to know this and uh, definitely it was i could not face to uh, i couldn't so show my face to the people in my colony and all it was really difficult to face them but obviously i felt that there is something wrong from my side also that he had taken such a step i not just it was not just his mistake but i think there are something lacking from my side also that i was not able to understand what was his aspiration what he wants to do and in, in his life so i felt like it was not just his mistake but my mistake also and i would do anything to help him realize his uh, aspirations and all what did ramesh uh, what whatever did happens chabuddin's mother felt and what her heart thoughts what has been the hardest thing for her uh i couldn't believe that shah can do something like this but only when he came and confessed ki yes he has done something like this i was ashamed i was like he's such a good boy he is he knows value of hard work he's uh you know working in a garage and i always supported his dreams and that is why i got him the smartphone and it was a tiktok video <laughs> which put those all the all those things in his mind that i don't know it was just like i was worried about the uh, work because of the neighbors and the you know our society around us they know us very well and they might not give us work at all in that sense like it was just like how can he do it and most of the time it was like he did we do something to encourage it did we not understand his ambitions or did we should we have uh, gotten him the money or arranged it somehow so that he could participate in that competition mm-hmm. so it is more like where did we lagged mm mm-hmm. uh in supporting him in his ambition mm mm-hmm. uh that was the thing which actually went through my mind okay out of the role play i need to do a fact correction the sherpa's families did not read their facts very well mrs sherpa did break a leg also and we are proceeding with that that she is also suffering with a fractured leg in addition to the loss of money so we are back into the meeting again so what do hasan and shahabuddin do you want to say anything you've just heard what the victims and others people who have been affected by your action have been affected in what manner and what are their thoughts do you want to say something i don't know uh, what to say exactly but uh, uh, i am very sorry to mrs sherpa and uh, her family for what i did and i told that i never thought myself that i would be a criminal and i did not even think i was doing a act that was criminal and i am very sorry for that and uh, i feel ashamed of myself that now i am in society i am being called a criminal i am being brand- branded as a person who did a uh, offense of theft and uh, i am sorry that mr sherpa had to face i did not think that uh, i did not have it in mind at the, at that moment that i could even hurt her physically 
uh, i never thought that uh, it could co- cause her any mental or physical injury i just thought that uh, i was taking some money and i will throw it back into her house later but now i have realized that uh, i have done more wrong than i ever thought i could i i, I was doing by committing such offense so i am very sorry and i am open to any kind of uh, like i will pay i work in a garage i will pay the money back if my parents are unable to pay the full amount i will uh, give my income and i am willing to work uh, in any way if possible for mrs shet for her family any kind of work i will i am willing to offer that or anything that mrs shet for any kind of uh, thing that mrs shet for ask me to i will do that i am very sorry for what i have done mrs shet hasan do you want to say something um, yes ma'am uh... after hearing uh, what everyone uh, just said i am very ashamed of my actions i i i would like to again apologize to mrs sherpa and and her daughter i believe that as as, as she just said that she they, they uh, she she used to reside very far away from her uh, from her family and all alone and uh, i caused such alarm in their minds such anguish in their minds uh, i would like to apologize to the whole sherpa family and also i'd like to apologize uh, to my parents for bringing such shame and embarrassment uh, to all to all uh, to all the members of my family and um, i i promise that i'll be a better son and lastly i i'd like to apologize to shahbuddin and and his family because i believe that This, this whole fiasco was my brain child and i uh, brought shahbuddin into this um into this scenario so i'd like to apologize to him for not being a better friend and also to his family uh, and and to everyone uh, and also i'd like to uh, i'd like to in my capabilities do anything uh, which can uh, you know amend Uh, my mistakes i'd like to uh, if if given a chance make everyone realize that this this has also disturbed me and uh, and i'd like to be a better person mrs sherpa and ragini what do you think that you want uh, hasan and shahabuddin to do to make the wrong right um, obviously we want our money back uh, we were in dire need of it and it was very essential for our living also after listening to their confessions and their apologies we i i personally feel uh, that they have done it under some such circumstances they were not habitual offenders and since i've come to realize this I think they need valuable education also um that is what i want they should be educated so that they gain some values also that is what i want this is sherpa yes ma'am um <laughs> i think ragini needs to reply okay that is as well right ragini uh yes ma'am actually i personally think there could be two resolution first we we actually need a refund back on the composition of whole money uh, which they have taken from my mother and along with that the medical expenses which which are occurred yes. after that incident and second thing because after seeing this all i realized that they are just a young boys so there should be something to make them understand that that what is the gravity of the thing and then when they decided to go with it what could be the consequences and for that thing i personally would like to say that uh, they should be in girls in some social service for senior citizen home so that they could know and understand how difficult it could be to manage and carry on things at that age and that too with limited resources okay hasan and shahbuddin what do you think you need to do you heard what uh, mrs sherpa and ragni expect from you what do you think first hasan will say and then shahbuddin can say what do you think you need to do 
Um, and I think anything that uh, anything that Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Sherpa and uh, her daughter they they want to they want me to do uh, if they are saying that I I should serve in a senior citizen institution where where I could you know realize how I have affected such a uh, such a senior person and uh, anything that that can uh, make this better I I am willing to offer I, I am I'm just in in it for anything. I just want to uh, uh, make my family and the uh, family of all those what, all those who have been affected realize. They have said they want the money which you have stolen as well as the expenses. <clears throat> what do you think you need to do to do that? Will you be able to do it? Are you willing to do uh, it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. If if my family is unable to recompensate have they done the wrong have they done have they done the wrong for them to compensate who has done the wrong no ma'am no ma'am i have done the wrong then why do you expect your family uh, to do that ma'am because uh, uh, mr sherpa um, just now said that they are in dire need of the money so i am certainly will not be able to recompensate in such an instant uh, you know, in, uh, in such a short notice. So, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want my family to pay even a single penny. But then, if if uh, the circumstances demand any instant payment, I don't know. I mean, I I will do anything for it. You will go and hit another person. Uh, I'm sorry, ma'am. You will go and hit another person. You'll do anything. Ma'am, your voice is breaking. I'm sorry. Okay. Whether Shabuddin wants to say, what is it that you need to do? Hello, ma'am. Shabuddin? Your voice is breaking too much. Okay, we'll start again. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. 